This is the main event. The gloves are coming off. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. We're about to go full court press. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Go! The Bulls win it! They win it! It's time to play ball. High fly ball in the right field. She is gone! Listen in as we tackle everything in the world of sports right now. Who do you think you are? Throw your hat in the ring at 516-572-7440. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Oh yeah, baby. Welcome to WHPC Sports Talk here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I am Michael Merlo, joined by Matt Leonard, Joshua Yamahi. Elijah Blaine and Ross Levine. Guys, how you doing today? Do something stuck in your throat over there? Yeah, you know. All right. <laughs> feel a little under the weather the past few days, but Why I'm all good. Why are you good. here? No, all, no. I'm all good today. <laughs> I've been sucking on some cough drops all, all uh, afternoon long. Okay. So I'm feeling a lot better, though. Feeling okay. good. Your voice sounds like you've got a frog in your throat or something. So no, I'm I mean, sure you're good. I probably should have cleared my throat right before then, but I didn't. <laughs> and I forgot about it. I'm like, oh, I'm invincible. <laughs> That's how I am. I didn't feel good We're all, all like 2021. We're invincible. We'll live forever. It's fine. No, but like all weekend, I've been, I haven't feel, felt great and I worked. I just kept working, working, working. Good for you. Make well, that money. It's yeah. not good. Just, I was a little sick the past couple days, but. Oh, no. Guys, I'm, <laughs> I've been sick to my stomach for a little while now, for 89 days to be exact. Oh, uh, yeah. But um, how are you guys doing? Well, it's nice to have power in here again. Yeah, so. <laughs> we're back. Is this the first live show back? Uh, I don't know. For sports, yeah. Yeah, no, sports, definitely. yes. Like, in general, yeah. I don't, we are? Uh, I think in general. No, in general. In general, in general yeah, yeah, it has to be, yeah. What's funny is I, I tried we to got tune back in on, two hours ago. I tried to tune in on Friday. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> not working. Yeah, so I'm yeah, like, yeah. all right. And I forgot to take Sean was working. And then, like, a couple hours later, I went to go get back. And I'm like... Still not working, so I texted Sean. He was like, "Well, oh, power outage." Mike, when I tell you, I was so psyched up to host on Friday. <laughs> I, I was coming in, I was ready. I had the notes all together. So what happened? Like, what what exactly happened? Did you guys stop? Outage. No, we, did you guys stop, or you kept going? We didn't even get to start. The I walked in, the power was gone, and then. We're like, let's hang out for a half hour, see if it comes How'd back. How'd you walk Hopefully. in? We have an electronic thing to get in. Well, you know, I knocked. I have manners. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so. I thought I heard muffled sounds. No, like, I thought I heard uh, people trying to speak. No, I was static on the radio apparently, but we weren't mm-hmm. doing nothing. Oh, you guys weren't doing a show. Nope. No. Oh, so this is the first sports show since Thursday. That's yes. correct. Yep. So, I, I did not. And there is still no progress in the lockout. How about and, that? And I, yeah, I didn't right. even, I didn't even know that. I would have, you know, maybe gotten some things from Friday. Or over the weekend, really you early still in the can. weekend. You haven't told anybody what you're doing yet. I know I haven't, but <laughs> I would have planned so long. I would have planned like it. I know. Okay, let's talk about the very <laughs> depressing news in baseball that it's just not getting any better. Uh, baseball, uh, the owners and the players, they are still meeting as we speak, mm. but it's not looking good, yeah. and uh, nope. it is not looking optimistic that there is going to be a season starting on time. I've known this now for a couple of weeks that the owners don't care. And the owners are okay with losing games in April. April means nothing to them. April is bad weather, bad attendance. Yep. And they will save money from not $20 million a day from not paying these players in April. And it's just really sad that a lot of these owners, and Steve Cohen excluded from this, and, and probably a couple and of Hal other Steinbrenner. owners. I would say Hal Steinbrenner, although he is a lead um, you know, executive throughout these talks. So I don't know if he could have knocked some sense into some of these smaller market owners. He hasn't. So I don't know about him. He's up in the air. But specifically, Steve Cohen, I'd probably say the Boston Red Sox owner, and I would probably say the Dodgers, the Dodgers, owner. Dodgers owner. Who is Dodgers? I know Maddie Johnson owns part of them. It's, Who else owns it's them? a big it's group, right? It's yeah. a big group. Yeah. The, 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 I should say their ownership group. Yeah, Magic owns part of them. I don't know who else owns them at all. These guys care about the sport. The others don't. The smaller market teams do not care. They're okay with having $50 million payrolls and making as much money from revenue sharing, the TV deals. It's a sad day for baseball, and they're going to pay heavily for this, Isn't the Rockies owner leading the talks, really? Dick Monfront, yes. That's a name. That's a... (laughs) Very apt to name or Mon Monfont or Monfront, yeah, Monfort. His first name. Oh yeah, his name is Dick though. (laughs) 
Okay. Dick Monfron. But, yeah. Uh, see, we, we almost needed the, uh, <laughs> the dumb button. Uh, <laughs> don't get us in trouble. It is, we just uh, got back. We don't want to go off again. Listen, it, it's a very sad day. It, it, it truly is that they are going to. And this is, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel. To me, this is all on the owners. The owners could have stopped this a while ago. The owners imposed this lockout, called it, uh, you know, a defense mechanism so that they can, you know, get a deal done in time and waited 43 days since December 2nd when the lockout, or December 3rd, when the lockout went into place to finally make an offer yeah. to the players. It took a month and a half. This isn't, this was negotiating in bad faith. This was not caring whether or not the, the season started on time. And they alienated their fan base. They don't care. I've said this for a little while now. The owners need the players, and the players need the owners. Without the players, the owners don't have a product. And without the player, and without the owner, I mean, what did I say? Without the without players, the owners don't have a product, you say. Exactly. And without the with, owners. Without the without the owners. Owners. That's the next one. <laughs> the players don't have people to pay them. That's true. So now, what's the common denominator in this? The owners and the players need the fans, and that's who's getting hurt. I just got a slight update, very minor, from John Heyman. I don't know how reliable he is anymore. But MLB is pressing for a 14-team postseason and hasn't been too well received. Lots of things still to hash out. So yeah, Nothing's happened today. Nope. So what happened was, and uh, please, we love your phone calls on this, baseball fans. If you're a baseball fan considering dropping the sport, 516-572-7440, please. Or if you're just an upset baseball fan that can't live without it like I can, and I can never drop the sport as much as I want to, we'd love to hear from you. 516-572-7440. So the playoff format. So the owners saw that Major League Baseball had signed a contract. The contract is with ESPN. So they, they signed a contract for um, extensive coverage of the playoffs mm-hmm. and another package. So they want necessarily this wild card week. So that, that's what they're going to get. They're going to get a wild card week of games. Now the owners want 14 teams. They want a three game series for six teams in each league. The two top teams in the National League and American League get a bye. It's a three game set all mm-hmm. played at the team with the better records home. And that's the first round of the playoffs. So like what we had in the COVID year. Exactly. Okay. And the players want a... Tw- they offered 12 teams. I like that better. I agree with you. Now, the uh, now it's been thought that the players would give in to the 14 teams if they were to get something in return. Because agreeing to this, it would get to them... At, you know, it would get about $100 million more in revenue for the owners. So they thought... The players will give in as long as they get something. The players haven't gotten anything. So why the hell would they give in? Mm -hmm. So that's the 14-team playoff thing. That's what's coming. That would be my my best guess. uh, That's like the the NBA does, right? Like uh, it's, eight, it's almost eight, ha- eight, it's almost eight, half 16, the league. 16, it's almost yeah, half but I, I hate it though. It really devalues the regular season. That was the best mm-hmm. part of the um, MLB. Every game, like in let's see, September felt like a playoff game because only a select teams could make it into the playoffs. But now you're gonna have you know more Josh more markets yeah. interested in baseball later in the year, and you're not getting rid of races. You know you're gonna have big time races at the end of the year, whether it's for a wild card, whether it's for a division. You think, you know, one of these teams fighting for a division spot or a wild card spot wants to play this three game set on the road compared to at home? Nah, I mean, Gary Cohen said this a lot in the Mets broadcast, which is why I love them adding the last change they made to the playoffs. Them adding the, the other wild card and having a wild card game. Right. One game playoff and you're in. The loser goes home. Because it really enhanced the importance of winning your division. I mean, for so long it was, it was guys or teams that just... You know, muddled through the regular season. Go, oh, we're going we're to make the wild card. We're in a good spot. Yeah. yeah. There was mm. no priority to winning the division. So I like that change. I'm not sure about this one, though. Wild I card. I lie to you. Wild card game is difficult. Yeah. You don't want to play Wild card game is sometimes the most exciting day of the year. Our, yeah. if, unless your team's playing in it. Even we, the, unless everybody in this room knows. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It. it sucks. I still hate Connor Gillespie to this day. Exactly. <laughs> My <laughs> solution to the wild card game. That's, oh yeah, my yeah. solution to the wild card game is a three game series. Well, that's what they're giving you. I don't like everybody that. else. It's it's just multiple games. You I get, like the you one win and two done. games and you're in. 
Listen, a lot of people don't believe a five-game series, you know, determines the best team in the league, in, in, in between the two teams, I mean, not in the league. You know, saying that you really need seven games or possibly even more to determine who the better team is. You're never going to get more. So obviously you're never going to get more. Seven's perfect, in my opinion, but three for sure. I mean, how many times do we see a bad team take a series from a good team? Not necessarily a... I'm not even talking about a team middle of the pack beating a first-place team. I'm talking about a team like the Orioles hmm. going to Yankee Stadium and taking two out of three from the Yankees. That has happened before. It happened this year. So... There's so much randomness in baseball, and now you're having a three-game series. I'm with you guys. It's a little too short, unless it was, you know, the current format. Jo- uh, Elijah, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I kind of like a three-game series in the current 10-team format. Yeah, that's, like, what I like, really. So but, you're saying for the wild card game, get rid of that and make it a three-game. Yeah. I would make okay. it a three-game. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You're then the next five. They did that the in the seven. pandemic year, I think. It's done. It, listen, it's done. We we don't have to talk about mm-hmm. ten. I don't yeah. even think we have to talk about twelve. It'll be fourteen. Yeah, probably. It's going to be fourteen. So seven teams each league. That means three division winners and four wild cards. Wow! <sighs> and now get this. Ready for this? Yeah. The teams that won their division, the two teams that won their division, oh, yeah. and yeah. the first wild card team. Well, not really. The two teams that won their division the that are playing in this. That are playing in this. Um, you know, three game set, they get to pick their opponent. Yep. I what? hate that so much. And they're gonna do it on national TV. I can't <laughs> it's, stand. It's gonna be that. a lot of fun. See, that's I like like reality show. But things that's like not what that. the MLB that's is. Not, that's not what I sports like, are. I like. I like that drama. I'm the a fan of the drama. I'm a fan of it too. But yeah, <laughs> it's me, so like, stupid. But just I don't like the. The idea of picking your opponent is just no. Yeah, it goes against much the spirit of competition, in my opinion. I mean, it's a little bit too reality show, manufactured storylines, and you have it. to think, you have think, to think have about that it this for the way. MLB. But like, sometimes it's too far. Let's say you're the Yankees and you're, you want to pick your opponent. You, you get you're in the spot where you're not the first seed, you're second or third. You get to pick your opponent, whatever. Yeah, you realize, oh, we have Garrett Cole. And his his stuff matches up well against this lineup. What's going to pick that team? Like, that's such an unfair advantage. Now, listen to this. So, do you remember when there was a chance for a three-team, like, three-way tie in the, in yeah, the like, yes. wild card this no. year? It got out. So, the Yankees, at, the, at this time when it came out, the Yankees were the first team, technically. Mm-hmm. And they would have had the choice. And they would have, would have had to choose between the Blue Jays and the Red Sox. And they chose the Red Sox. And that got out. Yeah, and the Red I Sox remember. are pissed. Yeah, now, I remember. how did that work out? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kike Hernandez said it after the game. Like, like this was you know bulletin board material, and, and they used it as motivation. Yeah. Um, there's a report out now that the players yep. are. Um, MLBPA has organized a fully staffed stadium and facility for players to train in Arizona. Um, there is interest in doing the same in Florida. Uh, so we're having, having spring Florida. training. <laughs> so they'll yeah. have spring training without, you know, <laughs> games and without official. games and their coaching staffs just with each other, yeah. which is a good thing. They, they should tell the now. Now. They should, right? <laughs> But you don't know who... Ha, have like te- all-star scrimmages. I would watch that in a heartbeat. Not, not televised, though. You can't televise it. Why can't you? They don't have Pro, a contract. They don't have the contracts. But... Get somebody in there with a phone. I don't care. <laughs> your iPhone 13 Pro exactly. can record very well. It's like and cinema you go, mode now. You like, go live on. on YouTube. Bang. I think you'd get at least 50,000 people watching. Oh, you'd get millions of people watching You think that. so? Yes. I think baseball, man. It's Put it on TikTok. People will watch it there. People are mad. People are very, very mad. And, and this is not going to be good for the sport. They oh. are absolutely killing the sport. Uh, let's talk about uh, something here with the owners. Uh, so they have this self-imposed deadline today, February 28th, if there's no deal. By the time February or tomorrow's March first, yes. yes, no February 29th. By the time March first <laughs> comes around, they will cancel. They're going to start canceling regular season games. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the big issues um, being discussed is the competitive competitive balance tax, the luxury tax, and this is essentially a salary cap. So the salary, the luxury tax is about was at about two hundred and ten million dollars. If you go over this, you have to pay a certain amount of tax on that. So that let's just use the Dodgers, for example, who went over the luxury tax this season after their trades made with the Washington Nationals. How about Steve Cohen who was the payroll's like two seventy five. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> their payroll was at two hundred fifty million dollars after this. So they went over the luxury tax by forty million dollars. There is a threshold that you have to 
pay after you go over that tax. There's a percentage on that. Mm -hmm. So the owners now in this new proposal essentially want to raise that. They are raising the taxes by an incredible margin. You know, <laughs> if it's not 20%, it was about a 20% tax over one threshold, 40 after another, and then like 75 after another, which was huge numbers. That's what was in the agreement before. They want 50, 75, and 100% tax Ooh. rates on uh, if you go over by so a certain it comes amount. So if you go over a certain amount, it comes out of your pocket completely, basically. Essentially, Steve Cohen right now would have not gone over the luxury tax with, really? with the proposed numbers. Yes. It, it's so not, 275 as a payroll is allowed. It's a oh yeah you could spend whatever you want. But he's not over the luxury tax. I'm saying you're going seventy five. No, you're going. You're he's over the luxury tax by obviously yeah. He's over. I mean, let's say they settle at two twenty. He's over by fifty five million right now, and he's not yeah. done. That's a huge number. He's, he's talking to Freddie Freeman. Or he's, or something. he's most likely going to pay another a hundred percent tax on that. That is huge. So he was and the owners want. To lose draft picks. If you go over by a certain Ooh. amount, you're going to lose draft picks. I don't like that. They are essentially setting a salary cap here with the luxury tax rates they are currently proposing, and they're not going to be able to get anything done. They shouldn't. That shouldn't be allowed. Install the uh, install a salary cap. That's exactly what I was going to say. If you're going to do a salary cap, do a salary cap. Don't try and dance around and make all these stupid rules that nobody's going to follow. It is it is so bad. It is so bad what the owners are trying to do. And I it, I had said this multiple times. I was never going to take a side. Mm -hmm. Never going to take a side. I'm I'm fully on the player side. I hope they win. I think a lot of fans are. If we're going to miss time, I hope the players win. They deserve it. If they we're going to miss time, they're losing out on money because the owners are the owners trying are making money. The owners are making money and trying to ruin the game. The players are trying to make the game better, and they're or making it. and they're making concessions, concessions, and they're not being so stubborn. The, the owners are. It's it sucks. You guys remember the the Chris Bryant saga? Oh, he yes. was coming up the, the service time, the yeah. service time manipulation stuff, mm -hmm. and ever since then, like I, since this lockout started, because of that, I've solely been on the side of the players because it's 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 not even that whole situation showed us for a lot of them. It's not even. About the priority of winning. It's no. just we're gonna try to make our savings when we can. This guy's a phenom, right? He's our best prospect. He was supposed to be. He led spring training home runs. That means anything. He yeah. had more home runs than any major league player. He did. should have been up to start the season, like yeah. or none. Everybody, that was like 2015, right? Yes, yeah, 16. Yeah. No, it was 15. He, he won the MVP. Oh, yes, 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 sorry. That was the year you um, beat the Cubs in 16, the 16. Uh, they won NLCS, the uh, yeah. Thank you for 15. reminding me. That felt good. Yeah, you lost <laughs> the Royals though. So. I don't. I don't care. But we made the World Series. It's okay. <laughs> I'm with Matt. That's that's my little. Uh, that's a win. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> we got we got to take the wins when we can get them. With we got one win in that World Series. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> like Jerry's familiar. We uh, <laughs> let's not go down that road right She's now. Still on the team? Soon is no. he? Good. Soon no. we'll be able to go down that road. I mean, what are, what are we going to talk about? We're going to have the NBA playoffs, but you know, no local no teams. Knicks. <laughs> that's, no well, Knicks. I mean, the Nets are going to be in. I know. Uh, who cares? Well, yeah. It's the Nets, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be. It's gonna be difficult if there's. We're no not gonna pick a team like <laughs> college yeah, basketball. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's a big weekend. That's coming college. soon. Everybody, study up your college basketball because there's gonna be a lot of college basketball. March talk. Madness coming you know, up. The only thing to talk about with the NBA is the lottery. That's it. Yeah, draft lottery. Well, for the Knicks at least. Yeah, I mean, that, there's playoffs for this other draft teams. isn't even yeah. that good though. No, there's like five players that are decent. Yeah, I My, think a lot of drafts like that lately. I don't know why. Mike, we might need the dump button if we're going to talk about the Knicks today. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh <laughs> so that's online. We may, yeah, we may we may get to the Knicks in a little bit. Um, <laughs> one of the reasons why these owners and these small market owners are so, the small market owners, you know, many small market teams. So therefore, small market owners are uh, you know very represented when it comes to the vote. They basically have the majority, um, I think, within the within the league. Yep, and. They are very afraid of teams like the Mets and the <laughs> Dodgers and the Yankees possibly and the Red Sox possibly going over this luxury tax and outspending other teams a crazy amount. And this is what I have to say to them. You're afraid of the Mets, right, who have spent now $270 million and want to add more. But first of all, nobody is at, there is no proof that spending all this money equates to winning. No. Oh yeah. There's no. no. There's no proof. The they, Mets are proof it doesn't. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and on top of it, the Mets are over the luxury tax because they have a few bad contracts. Robinson Cano's their third highest player, and yet 
You want to ruin it for everybody. So you're saying you we're going to have these high tax rates. We're not going to raise it. We're only going to raise it by $4 million. <laughs> the threshold. Are you kidding this me? You're going to ruin it for everybody. Nobody's saying you have to spend the money. Nobody's telling the Rockies owner, oh, well, you have to spend up to $200 million. Well, they're looking for a salary floor, but that's not that high. Spend your spend $80 million. It's not good for the game. Even $50 million, what some teams were doing last year. I don't care. Yeah. But why try and screw the other teams? I mean, when they, care they about think the it'll game. be more competitive. They think it'll be more competitive. They won't. But they think it'll help them out somehow. When you refuse to, like, get good prospects and you refuse to pay guys like Nolan Arenado with, in the Rockies' case, big money, no surprise you're not good. I mean, just, I hate to say it, but get good. I don't know why you're getting mad at <laughs> right, right now. You're right. the, Rock, the Rockies need to move because nobody wants to play there, first no, of all. No, the Rockies have a beautiful stadium. No, it's but just the fact that, that the altitude, nobody wants to play there. Nobody wants to pitch there. No one wants to pitch there. That's no, and the guys problem. get hurt because the difference of conditioning and the altitude then going to regular stadiums for half your games. That's, That's why Tulowitzki was always hurt. That's why um, Carlos Gonzalez was always hurt. I don't know about that, but basically, just feel the put the money into at least scouting, analytics, something. Do something with it. Because the Tampa <laughs> Bay Rays are very cheap, but they're really good. They're consistently yeah. good because they invest the money into they the scouting department. Too. I have a really well, good they, idea. Yeah, they need to move. I have a better idea. How about you owners that don't want to spend money, that don't care, that want to ruin it for everybody else, you small market teams that get revenue sharing, that make almost the same amount of money as the Boston Red Sox do in some cases, why don't you just sell the freaking team? Yeah. If you don't care about winning, if you don't care about baseball, sell the team. All these, Most of these owners have been come from daddy's money. Daddy's money. Oh, yep. daddy, I want this. I want that. <laughs> the Yankees owners too. The Yankees. To How Steinbrenner is that? <laughs> they just walked into walked in all these rich, rich families and have never been said no to. Yes, yes, yes. Have yes men around them all the time. <laughs> that was the Wilpons. And this is what they want. They don't want to lose these negotiations. They don't. And they just think, oh, because I'm rich and I have all this money, and nobody ever told me no. I'm going to get my way in these negotiations. Well, guess what? The greatest union in America, the Players Association, is telling you, no, you're not going to get exactly what you want, and you're going to lose out. And guess what? Any logical fan in the country, any logical fan of the sport realizes that this is on the owners. The players have been negotiating in good faith. They've given in to you for the last two negotiations now, and they're trying to make some of it back to make the game fairly decent. And all they want to do is ruin it and make more money. Well, screw them. Screw them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, I want a season as much as anybody. I want the season to start on time as much as anybody. Trust me, especially with what the Mets have done this offseason. Like, please sign me up. But Oh, yeah. If it means the players can get a little more of the piece of the pie like that the owners have had for so long, I'm, I'm all for it. The players got to get theirs. I'm, yeah. all, I'm right with you, Mike. I mean, the owners lost the PR war when they basically waited a month and a half, I think, mm -hmm. to basically just make a uh, go to the negotiating table. It's awful. Awful optics. Terrible look. Terrible yeah, look. I guess they just don't really care about the fans that much, where they could just sacrifice the season until, like, June or July when it gets warm and then play, like, 60 games, 80 games. It's ridiculous. They set a number. They set a date. They they know when they want to start. Have we heard anything out of Steve Cohen since since recently? Anything? S listen, only that I tweet about um, what's it called? <laughs> when he got screwed over. There is <laughs> no blaming a guy like Steve. Oh, I'm Cohen. not blaming There's him. I just no, want to know what he's thinking. No, I'd love to know what he's thinking. I'm sure he's pissed. Yeah, I'm sure he's pissed out of his mind. He's like, I spent all this money for what? <laughs> I spent all this money. Now they want to punish me for doing it, for investing in my team and caring about my team and wanting to win championships, sacrificing money from his wallet to spend on this team and to reap the benefits of winning and going deep into the playoffs. Making that money back, so, you know, make you playoff games late in the year. You're going to make that money back. He wanted to do that, and now he's being punished for it. And it sucks. Well, he's, the, he's a different type of owner than what you were saying. He isn't the, oh, daddy's money kind of owner. He earned his money. No, he, um, he built up. He through, earned that money. Through sketchy means, but yeah. Well, it, was, it wasn't like, you know, he didn't inherit it, is what I'm saying. It wasn't yeah, handed to him. Like, Here you go, it. take the yeah. money. He didn't inherit the team from anybody. But there's, you know there's, I think there's a difference between guys like Hal Steinbrenner and guys like who's like one of those cheap owners that Artie Moreno. 
<laughs> yeah, Ar- well, Artie Marino bought the team too. That's so, true. But like, I, I think Hal is Who, more. Who's the Pirates owner? To... What's his name? Oh, he's oh, an man. idiot. He's, he's, he's awful. He's awful. He's the worst one. Nutting. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> These guys. Spe- What's his name? Nutting. Yeah, they all have name. the cheap Great owners name. all have some names. The yeah. Pirates spent fifty million dollars. Really? I, uh, I wish I was nutting. Oh. Go on. Uh, <laughs> oh, do we need a God. dumb button. No, there? we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> It's, it's the last the, pi- the Pirates spent $50 million in payroll last year. $50 million in payroll last That's year. That's wild. Yeah. I'm saying because he has money, huh? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's and they only so had sad. like a two-year window when they were good. I'm and not even... just dumped it. I don't even care when they were good. I, I don't even care. They, they The amount of money they made last year, I don't even want to know what it was. They only spent $50 million yep. in payroll. Yeah. If they made $200, $300 million in revenue, they pocketed that. And they made that money back 10 times over. And yet, they want to institute a, a basically a salary yeah. cap and punish the teams that actually care about winning. Yeah, it's a nice little trap they have in uh, Pittsburgh. Basically, you field a team that's not that great, but you do basically the citizens of that city to go there because your stadium's nice. A lot of teams do it. It's beautiful. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, it's one thing when you're the Rays and you're committed to winning. That <laughs> But their stadium or, is garbage. Yeah, that stadium is garbage, but they're committed to winning. They've always fielded a good team. Mm-hmm. I can't They've remember, tried to, at least. They've yeah, tried I can't to. remember a best. time where the Rays just, like, did not care about winning since I've been watching about since I've been watching baseball. Since they were created in, like, the late 90s. They've yeah, just been that team. They tried. A lot of these cheap um, ownerships just tank. and then they, the Rays? Um, I don't know. Is it a group or is it one person? I think it's a group. Okay, that that's the way to go in baseball, I think. Yeah. Uh, unless you have Steve Cohen's money, the way to go is do it with other people. And the Dodgers were the same until yeah. that group came along. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Harper, uh, this is about an hour ago now, oh, no. I, I screenshotted yeah. it, posted a picture. This is just how you know how the negotiations are going today. Uh, Bryce Harper uh, posted a tweet, I mean a picture on his Instagram story of him saying, I, Yuramori Giants, I think that's how you say it, a team in Tokyo, got some time to kill. And then he goes in smaller print, I know you got at Boris Camp's number. Let's talk. Saying He wants to go play in Japan? He just won the MVP. He's going to go play in Japan? He's not going to play Major League Baseball for a little yeah. while. <laughs> there you got, I, your, got, uh, your, got your money. I'm, believe me, I'm all for shipping Bryce Harper to another country. I'm all for that. But I just think it's ridiculous. Well, so am I. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, think, I think the fact that it has to come to that is ridiculous. So am I, but I'd go watch some Japanese baseball if he was playing out I there. would watch him play in Japan. So, I would like him more if he played in Japan. Yeah, KBO, uh, MPB is going to get a lot of viewership jumping. Yeah. Selfishly, yeah. in my big-time baseball league, my fantasy league, I might be uh, keeping him. Mm. I have two keepers a year. Who's your other keeper? Uh, well, nobody. Just him. <laughs> Oh, you didn't I mean, keep anybody else? I can't. You only get two a year. And well, you don't who's have your other? Oh, you don't have okay, to keep them. Okay. But uh, Bryce Harper, my first. How much do Mets year? fans really hate Bryce Harper? A lot. So much. A lot. Oh my God, so Harper. much. Every I, every time he comes to the plate, I'm watching on TV. I'm yelling at my TV. I like Bryce Harper. I'm like, like one of the few who actually. I like understand. You're a Yankee I, fan. I, I understand well, why other fans fan, like him. Yeah, I, like I understand Harper. the appeal. What do you mean? You're the one of the one of the only ones. My friends like, are I, Yankee I fans. I feel like love a lot Harper. of people say that he's like no, overrated. I, and I, stuff I, like I, that. I do understand the appeal if you're not a Mets fan or a, fa- a player. A player. If you're a fan of a team in his division. Yeah. I understand the appeal if you're like I don't know a Giants fan. You're like, oh, I love Bryce Harper. Yankee fans. I love Bryce Harper. All I right. get it. But do you hate him more than Chase Utley? No. 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 At least top of the list. Because at least Harper's yeah. entertaining. Yeah. Ha- Harper's, so good, Harper's entertaining. a showman. Yeah, Harper is good. Ali was good, but he broke down his leg. I'm not forgiving him for that. Yeah. Never. That and was he was dirty. hated before that, too. He was hated. In that he that, was, that was a cherry on top. That was dirty. Yeah. That was disgusting. Yeah, nobody's right. taking him off that pedestal. <laughs> nope. Derek Jeter. Oh, speaking has, of players I hate, yeah. Exactly. Derek <laughs> Jeter has uh, stepped down as uh, CEO of the Marlins. And he's also selling his, uh, I think, 5% stake in the team. That's all he had? Uh, yeah. Yes. I thought he had way more. He no. uh, put in, I forget how much of it. So what happens is he got a $5 million salary for five years. If he stayed for five years, oh, this is what it was. He put $25 million into the team when he went to go buy it. Mm-hmm. So if he stayed for five years, he would have gotten that back 
on top of $5 million a year in salary. Hmm. He was only there four and a half years. Oh, hmm. so he doesn't make the money back. I don't know. They might have had a deal in, in writing saying, you know what? Hmm. If you get the hell out, <laughs> we will give you the 25. I find it weird. I've been waiting to say this since I heard the news came out earlier today. I find it odd that we get, oh, Derek Jeter's going to run the Marlins now. That's cool. Oh, wait a minute. He's traded their best player in the rating MVP to the Yankees. Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> that was always funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a coincidence that it was a Yankee. They, they traded him. I to understand Yankees, that, but it opinion. looks very weird now. Yeah, but they're always going to sell. I think they're always going to sell. Look at what they inherited the Jeffrey Loria years. They had to, like, right the ship. Yeah. I don't think I, I still don't think they should have sold Yelich. Yelich, well, he that, had the that contract he signed is not looking really great right now. No, it's but not. But he had he'll, a very turn around. He had he, a very team friendly deal with yeah. the Marlins. He had a rookie deal with the Marlins when he got traded. No, he no? signed for. Uh, it was even better. He had signed for like five years, sixty million. Oh. It's not like they made the playoffs with these guys, and it's not their no. fault. It's not their fault. They were fault very at close all. that year. State went MVP. They were very close. I mean, the Jose Fernandez stuff really hurt. That, them that a was lot. tragic. Yes. Yeah, and just their pitching evaporated, and Stanton yeah. got hurt a lot, a little bit, a lot, and then yeah. <laughs> Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. You want to talk about the ML- MLB lockout or anything you want to talk about? Anything. I mean, I got a funny story for you guys. We talk about Kyrie. Um, <laughs> just very quickly. Um, nothing to do with Kyrie. It has something to do with me. Oh, so what do I care then? Oh, sorry. Um, but anyway, <laughs> a lot. You know, it's weird that this news about Jeter's coming out now, and obviously yeah. Jeter, a former player. Um, really, I'm, sh- I'm sure he's signed <laughs> siding with the players in this uh, in this fight here in, in the lockout negotiations. But um, I want to say this. Jeter and the Marlins did not see eye to eye. Jeter wanted to spend money. Mm-hmm. He wanted to spend big. He was also told after the lockout he'd have about ten to fifteen million dollars more to spend. That ended up not being true. He was very close to signing Nicholas Castellanos, but mm. uh, something happened right before the lockout, and obviously, you know, weren't allowed to sign anybody after that. So he was just fed up. And I think he sees the issue and he knows the issue, and his team is part of the problem. Yep. The team that he runs is part of the problem where owners don't want to spend money and they want to stay have very low payrolls and that's they don't a care. M- uh, that's a market that the MLB should really work to like acquire Miami that's perfect for baseball yeah but they just have been unwilling to spend the money for like throughout the entire franchise's history I know they have two World Series but those could are you, flukes could but, you yeah. imagine the Rays with their team and their mentality playing in Miami yeah they would imagine be huge that. that'd be amazing it would be. And uh, just the stadium. It's not good. I my, hate it. My cousin. I'm glad it's not green anymore. <laughs> my cousin went there and he says, you you couldn't even tell if it was an airport or a baseball stadium. Yeah. <laughs> That's how neutral it is. <laughs> I but think that we have a UBS arena sometimes. And it's pretty far from downtown, too, I think. I've never been to Miami, so I don't know. Yeah. I neither have. You've been to UBS, though, I assume. Yes. It looks like an airport when you walk in. Oh, uh, when you walk en- in. Which entrance? The main entrance from the Emerald Parking. Where are the main entrances? The you the escalators? Let me just... The small escalators, right? Yeah, it's not like... Well, all right, yeah, I know that. Uh, I don't know. I, I walked up with my friend. We went to Monster Jam, and he goes, this is an airport? This is inside an airport? He doesn't know anything about sports. Oh, let me look at my pictures. I took pictures when I walked. I take <laughs> Have pictures Have you ever everywhere. been in uh, Tropicana? No. I uh, have. Thank God. <laughs> I have. It's awful. It's I do not want to go there. It's depressing to watch on TV. Yeah, it, it is. It's like a warehouse. It really is a warehouse. I feel that way about the... Te- not the Texans. The, the Rangers new stadium. Rangers. Oh, Texas Rangers? No, I've yeah. been there. I like it. Really? Yeah. I just... I, I the brand new one No, I'm it, looks ba- it looks bad on TV. But it looks so inside, bad on TV. I think when it looks inside, nice. It looks nice. You've been there? Yeah. How was it? Good? Yeah, I liked it. Okay. I just... It, it looks like a... I don't go a lot of it places. It looks like a barbecue. To these, uh, it's built like a barbecue. Stadiums. You ever see those pictures from the top? It's yeah, built like a barbecue. It's, it's, yeah, it, it does look like that. But when you're in like the ground it's level... It's a box. Like... It just looks like a large brick structure. Okay. I, yeah, I, I can get behind that. Like, yeah. It feels like, kind of like that. It, it's a little bit that. generic. I'll, I'll give it that. But like... Yeah, it seems it seems industrial to me. That's what I yeah. don't like. Yeah. It's, it's based off of a warehouse. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Matt, I think you're right. What, the airport? Yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> nothing that says... No, he's right. He's 100% right. There's nothing that says Islanders. I mean, it's nice. Yes, it's classy. They got the brown... It's not yeah. what the Coliseum was at all. It's got, like, you know, look, like the brown walls and things like yeah. that, but... And, and that's, it's like you're walking around JFK. Yeah. I mean, again, it's nice. It looks very oh, nice. of course. It's new. 
but yeah, you're right. Nothing that says Highlanders. <laughs> Maybe they'll work on that. Maybe if they didn't rush it, I know. Have it, have it's it's coming. Here. It'll get here. It's coming. It, it's coming along. Yeah. The team's not, but it's coming no. along. No. I see a Jeter. I like the garden better. Go of on. course. <laughs> Come on. The garden's the mecca. And they got the I greatest know. popcorn in the yeah. world. <laughs> um, anyway, Jeter out. Uh, G- imagine Jeter to the Mets. To no. Like, nah, imagine I Jeter to like to. Uh, imagine if A Rod bought the Mets and Jeter was hired. Oh my God. <laughs> I think oh, he's going God, to another please. baseball team. I don't think it's going to be the Yankees. And it apparently, can't be the Yankees. that'd be a yeah. Wow. Apparently, he's not really friendly with oh, they, House Time. They have terrible, terrible relationship. Yeah. Oh uh, no! And not just how. Cashman. Just, yeah, Cashman in general. We yeah. got a caller on the line. Caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Charlie from Floral Park. What's I'm up, Charlie? Uh, just a couple of points on uh, baseball. Number one, you were talking about rich guys who inherit teams. Yes. The best way I've ever heard that described is they were born on third base yeah. thinking thinking they hit a triple. <laughs> I heard that the other day. And I yeah. like that. It's yeah, very good. I heard that a while That's ago. That's very good. And one of you gentlemen made the point that Cohen spending all this money is, is no guarantee that he's going to buy the pennant. To me, I totally agree. I think that's what the beauty of sports, that you can't buy the pennant. Mm. God knows the Yankees have been trying to do it for as long as I've been around. <laughs> yep. And the reason is, the reason is by the time these guys become free agents, and that, that's a problem in baseball for the players, they're old. They're older, and they, they're not as good. They break down. They're past their peak, and especially now that you can't use steroids. I mean, the steroids kept the players hanging around forever. You know, Barry Bonds was having Ruthie in years in his late 30s. Um, And the other thing is the greenies. They don't have the greenies anymore. Uh, You know, the amphetamines. Yeah, and that kind of hurt. I mean, that's what, like, the um, MLB was, was, right? Willie Mays was a big greenie guy. Yeah. I mean, like, MLB was trying to fix that with the balls, like the juice balls. They were trying to get, like interest back into the sport but players complain that's, that's the beauty that you can't buy the pennant otherwise yeah. what would be the point the yankees would win every single year the <laughs> dodgers would win every single year there's so I, much uncertainty in baseball charlie and you know exactly look at the dodgers they just spent 250 million dollars they went out and got the best pitcher available on the market and yeah. they got a stud shortstop and yet they did not win the world series they didn't even get there a mm. team without their best player got there and beat yeah. them in six games. So, you know, to, to to try and stop these teams from spending so much money, I don't understand how it affects the smaller guys. I, I don't. They don't care. <laughs> it's they no just, guarantee. It's never a guarantee in you know, baseball. I don't think the Mets have, except for Pete Alonso, I think the entire team is a question mark. I, mean, I can't think of one player. Even who, DeGrom? Who, the ground's always hurt. My God. He's a question mark for sure. Yeah, you, listen, a huge question mark. Charlie, you're, you're right. But in, but with any team, a, a lot has to go right for you to have a very successful well, season. The formula, the formula is the Tampa Bay formula. You get good, young, hungry players. They will always beat the fat cats who are basically on the injured list. I, I truly believe that. Yeah, you but know, Tampa... Teams have tried the Tampa Bay Ray uh, system, and sometimes it doesn't work. I think they're just better and more cutting edge, and I think owners just need to get guys who are like that. My, my point is you just have to develop with youth, and you can't rely on free agents, that's all. Yeah. Your farm system is always going to be so important. It's very. And look at the Yankees. When they won all those pennants, they had the core. They say core four, but I would say core five with Bernie Williams. Sure. Yep. That you win with young, good, young Derek Jeter, hungry, young mm. Paul. I mean, you need young players. That's the beauty of sports. Otherwise, it would be boring. It would be like rooting for U.S. Steel. And yes. you know, but Before I leave, <laughs> you guys know about um, Kurt Flood, right? That would be the guy to study. Yes. Yeah. He gave up his career. He was traded from a great Cardinal team in 69 when they had the reserve clause. And he refused to go to Philadelphia. They, they were such a crappy team in a lousy stadium and they were pretty racist fans. And he wouldn't go, and he gave up his career. And every, every baseball player owes him a debt of gratitude. Yep. I mean, anyway, Ken Burns' baseball is my favorite documentary. So, <laughs> yeah, I know a lot about Kurt Flood. You absolutely cannot beat that. Yeah. Anyway, look, so keep up the good work. Love listening to you guys. Thank you very much, Charlie. Always a great call. Um, yeah, I like say one thing guy. about what he said. Sure. 
Um, I love how he said in 1969 this, this player, Kurt Flood, didn't want to go to Philadelphia because the fans were racist, the team was bad, and the stadium was terrible. Yeah, I thought like nothing has said, changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the vet was a terrible this stadium. This is great. <laughs> Could be right about that. Yeah. Um, all right. Enough of the depressing baseball, I think. <laughs> Just quick shout out to um, guys like Max Scherzer and Garrett Cole. Oh, yeah. Who are going to be, and listen, they're, we know they're rich guys already. But um, Max Scherzer is going to, uh, he's going to lose about $230,000 30, $230, a day. Oh, so wait a minute. <laughs> $230,000 a day, every game missed. Oh, my. And uh, Cole, $190,000 a day. And these are the two guys up mm. front fighting for these younger guys. That's how you know it means something to them. They care enough. Listen, they got their money, and they could say, all right, you know what, we'll take this deal no matter what. doesn't matter. But, uh, no, they're fighting, and they're going to keep fighting. I hate so, to uh, be the devil's advocate here. If Max Scherzer losing two hundred thirty, no, yeah, $230,000 a day would be like us donating two bucks a day to something. Like, you know? Like, I don't know. Didn't we have this argument before? With the amount of money he's oh, making, God. it would be like me dropping $2 on the ground. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, something, something so? like that. No. Two hundred and thirty grand. Two hundred thirty grand. Well, you got to think about it. He's only made about two hundred thirty. Only, only. <laughs> thirty million dollars, maybe in baseball. Yeah, because this that's is without like, taxes. This that's is his only. second huge contract, right? Yeah, this is the second. The first, last one is the first. The last one is the first. Right, though. so he's making yeah. so much more money now. All right, so yeah. All right, you are listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I am Michael Merlo, along with Matt Leonard, Joshua Imahi, Elijah Blame, and Ross Levine. All right, guys, let me tell you a funny story. So I've been feeling good, right? Yeah. Sick. What's urgent Did care? Did you get the yesterday. vaccine? I am boostered and I've been Harry tested. Irving didn't. I've Go been on. tested <laughs> for positive, okay? Now, uh, what? I mean, excuse me, tested for COVID, and I was negative. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, I, I got to go. Like, uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> so Kyrie Irving uh, does not have the vaccine, and they, now they are saying that uh, mm-hmm. Mayor Eric Adams is going to remove that um, you know, vaccine, va- vaccine mandate by March 7th. But Kyrie can only attend the games. He cannot play them. What? Yo. Are you, you serious? You I didn't that? know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. He can only attend the games. He cannot. Play. Why? <laughs> I'm going to read that for you in one second. Oh, my I God. just want to say this, and this ties into what I want to say about me. <laughs> okay. I truly believe this. We may be the most powerful, strongest country in the world. Yeah. We have to be the stupidest. We have to be the stupidest country in the world. Listen to this today. So I'm trying to go. So today I felt a lot worse earlier in the day than I did now. I feel actually really good right now. And I'm trying to go to a doctor. I want to get another strep, strep test, you know, all the things mm-hmm, checked mm-hmm. out. So I call a doctor's office. And, and I, I don't have a primary care doctor right now. So I call, I'm trying to call. Like I'm trying to call. call. No, primary. I went to oh, urgent you went care. To, oh, okay. But okay. I'm trying to go to a primary care doctor. So I call, That's right? To start. I call. God. And they're like, why do you want to come in today? Now you think of the doctor, right? 90% of the time, you're going to the doctor. Why? Because you're, you're sick or you're hurt or something. Or hurt. Right. Okay. So I call and I'm like, they ask me all these questions. So I I'm go, sick. I go, I'm <laughs> sick. You know, I got a sore throat. Um, you know, I was coughing a little bit, a little congestion in my chest. She goes, 20 seconds goes by. Okay. Well, then I can let you in the office. I go, what? Huh? They yeah. go, yeah, you have... Two two uh, side effects COVID. Uh, of COVID. Two symptoms of COVID. Excuse me. We're not going to let you in the office. So I so I proceed to say, okay. So you are a doctor's office. I am sick. I cannot go to you. Can you please make sense of this for me? How stupid are we? How, I'm sorry to be so aggressive today. We are idiots. This world is made of a bunch of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> the people that run the state, the country, both sides of the aisle, idiots. Common sense is needed in this country. Please, for the love of God. We haven't had that, that is, in forever, so I don't think that's are happening Are you kidding me? Soon. I'm sick. <laughs> when when you said the people that run the state, I thought the word that was about to come out of your mouth was station. I thought we have to have somebody walk in right no, now. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's some common sense here, at least. Okay. Oh, my God. So, anyway... Kyrie Irving cannot pl- so ready. Woo! So New York City will lift the key to NYC vaccine mandate on March seventh, assuming numbers stay on track. Per Mayor Eric Adams, 
But this is from Shams Sharnia, Sharnia, whatever. <laughs> but I'm told is. private sector mandate still restricts Kyrie Irving from playing in home games, although he could enter Barclays Center as a spectator. Yeah, I mean, I, okay. think, I think you just have to play him at this point. Pay the fine and play him. If there is a fine to be paid, because I, I think there is. No, there's not. There hasn't. The been. NBA not going to let them pay a fine either. Yeah, even if they thought oh. about it. So like, no chance. Of course, they would. Listen, I think it's pretty stupid to think that they wouldn't have paid the fine this whole whoever, time. Whoever thinks that's an idiot, right? Yeah, whoever would have thought that. Was an idiot. <laughs> by the way, I was thinking about the meeting we have tonight, the all staff meeting we have yeah, tonight, yeah. and I'm thinking like the last time we him? had one. <laughs> He sat right next to me. Oh, you were you sitting with us last time? the entire time. I was like two seats away from you because he was sitting next to That's me. That's right. Oh, my God. You and were in I front was, of us. That's right. And I was watching the Brewers game, Braves game. Yes. I had money on the yes. Brewers to win the World Series, and they had lost the series that day. And he's sitting next to me. Oh, the Braves. You must be so, so <laughs> mad. The Braves just won. You hate the Braves. <laughs> oh my God! I'm punch him in the face anyway. Oh God! I digress. You, we we have that Nets thing in the vault, you know. What Nets thing? The, the, the Brooklyn Nets thing. Like, we have that take of his from Archie Dugan in the vault. Oh, my God. It's Are you there. serious? <laughs> oh, it's there. What do I got to do? Um, look look up his last name. Oh. I don't want to say it, but look up no, his last name. No, we won't say it. Maybe he's listening. <laughs> Why y'all look for that? Um, Is this a Nets take or something, right? Yeah. There we go. Oh, y'all got it. Do it. Have Kyrie Irving for home games. They have to pay a fine. <laughs> they do. Yes. The first offense is free. The second's a thousand. The third's you know four thousand. The rest on is five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So I just multiplied you know t- about twenty, 20 games, games. Yeah. Uh, times five thousand, and I got a hundred and ten thousand dollars. I don't think the Nets want to pay that. That's the Nets not are, that bad. Well, they're going to take it. It's one hundred and ten. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold on. I don't think they want to pay. Dylan. Dylan. Dylan hold on. Hold on. Oh. Hold on here. No, they don't want to pay it. <laughs> they want to pay hundred thousand dollars. They don't. Okay, that was worth it. That was worth it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> they would have paid the fine already if they could. They just haven't been able to. Yeah. Nick Kyrie paid. He'll pay it. You kidding he me? He would have paid it. Take it out of his pocket. He would have done it. Oh my god, <laughs> that's nothing out of his paycheck. It's like two percent, maybe yeah. less. Again. I mean, Talk about idiots in this world. <laughs> you say, I mean, listen, stupidity breeds more stupidity, right? Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it all started, yo. Like, this whole mandate came into place. It made zero sense from the jump to say, okay, yeah. hey, unvaccinated players, oh, if you're on the road and you're outside of New York, you can come if into... If you're from Utah yeah. and you know the vaccine, you can come play here. But, oh, Kyrie Irving, no, we got to keep you out because you you live in New York. And it's it, nothing against him personally. No. It's just a dumb rule. Yeah, I mean, I stopped caring about vaccine politics a while ago yeah so i'm just about if you're gonna have this mandate if some unvaccinated players can play all of them need to play it was stupid inconsistency from the jump mm-hmm. stupid now the, the, the commissioner doesn't even agree with that, no. that idiot yeah i mean it. It, yeah if you're adam <laughs> silver can they can he make them pay the fine no is he gonna let him they, I don't know what the I forgot what the rule is. They they're not allowed to. They're oh, not man. allowed to pay it. I I just overrule. I, this is stupid. Point, I'm I'm a Knicks fan. I don't want Kyrie to play, but like at least the principle of it. If he can sit inside of the stadium and just like so breathe, he can say yeah. He can just sit there. <laughs> then yeah, he's play allowed to play. <laughs> Does he have to wear a mask? Probably right. Yeah. yeah. America. Woo! Like, I he's mean, probably gonna be more spaced out when ball? he plays. And I, I play it. It. <laughs> wouldn't play it. Oh, fine. I wouldn't do it. Ah. And and Eric Adams too. He came in and inherited this stupid rule. And he had. He's basically what he did. And it's coming March seventh. He's playing both sides because mm-hmm. what he said today is a direct quote. It would send the wrong message just to have an exception for one player when we're telling countless numbers of New York City employees if you don't follow the rules. And he's talking about obviously. Right. Yeah, healthcare workers. Healthcare workers yeah. Like I lost their jobs. And he's right. He's 100% yeah, right. right about that. He is right. People did lose their jobs. Kyrie is making close to $40 million a year. Yeah. So we get that part of it, but we're saying it's just, it's stupid that we're having to even if there play was, both sides here. Right. If there was a hard rule where no vaccinated players whatsoever, no matter where you are, are not allowed to play in Barclays Center, okay, that's the rule. But you right. got to deal with it or get vaccinated. Eric Adams also said that he really wants a New York sports um, person to win a person, a team to win a title in four years. 
as his mayor. I don't think Let's that's go gonna Mets. happen. In four years. Let's it, go Mets. Yeah, in four years. I I, I don't hmm. think that's gonna happen. Well, maybe if. Uh, Who do you think the most likely is? Uh, Not that it'll happen. Rangers. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I hate the Rangers, yeah. but the Rangers. Rangers, the Mets, or Yankees. I, I I'm, I'm saying Rangers or Mets. Yankees. Yankees. I say no. The, the only person, okay. I, the only team I would have said years last year would have been the Islanders, but now that's that's, that's down the drain. The they, they need to. Would you like, say it's the Rangers? I know you're not an optimistic Rangers. Fan. Yeah. Well, they've been struggling a little bit lately, so it I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, they've been winning. No, they've been good. I'm. They were due to have a little bit of a struggle, but yeah. um, you know, yeah, I would. I would say the Rangers the, again. I think in a couple of years, not not this year. They're not cup contender yet this year. All right. They're not ready. Not you yet. don't think they're not enough experience? Yeah, I think that's going to hurt them, especially new when coach they, and everything. New co- well, it's not even the coach. I mean, that's part of it. But again, when you play against teams like Crosby, that's going to be a little bit tricky. Well, they just beat the Capitals bad. That's true, but like real bad. You know, no, that no, that's true. I think they match up well with Washington. Well, they do that's not. That's true. They Penguins don't. are on fire. Yeah, though. and Carolina's tough. Like those teams are really tough. Like it's not going to be easy to beat those teams in the series. I cashed out my twenty dollars bet on them to win the cup. The Rangers? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they might. Yeah. It, it's it's a good. Anything bet. can happen. Yeah, it's I hockey. Mean, you never know. Yeah, they're going to run into the lightning. If you have a hockey, <laughs> well, that's <laughs> going to happen. Yeah. yeah. If Shostak is playing if you, well. Yeah. And it's like having a hot pitching rotation. I didn't think it could happen. Look at us talking no. hockey without Anthony here. <laughs> Look at us. If he's listening, he's probably yeah. To be honest, right I only know that <laughs> Russian guy from the Rangers, and he's really good. Which one? Panarin? Uh, Panarin, oh, he yeah. He sucks lately. He's so bad. Lately he's been bad. That's true. He's been yeah. really bad. He's Connor Russian? McDavid to he's Russian. the yeah. Islanders. They're, Let's go. They're, <laughs> no. Uh, they're really they're learning his English. They really are learning his English. Like I, I really mean it. I'm sure so Panarin. Panarin, yeah, because they know he's going to pass. You so they just, so? Yeah, so he, they're saying he's saying it in Spanish, pass. So he, <laughs> they're, 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 they're does, doesn't um, doesn't Panarin own like a Nokia phone or something? I th- he he, he, he still, still uses like a Nokia 1998 phone. Really? Yeah, that's crazy. Joey Gallo of the New York Yankees Ooh. updated his uh, LinkedIn account to what? He just put his experience his on LinkedIn. there. He <laughs> made Why do you have LinkedIn as a Major League Baseball player? Because he doesn't have a job right now. So he updated <laughs> yeah. his LinkedIn. Okay. As, what, what did he update it to? What changed? Just, you know, he's interested in job opportunities. <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah, I like Joey Gallo so much better if he actually hit. Well, one of his <laughs> skills he put on here. Hitting homers. No. It's striking you'll actually, out. You'll love it. Yes. Really? Uh, skills. <laughs> striking out. Hitting into the shift. Getting dressed weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel like the, uh, like third one can be on Russell Westbrook's LinkedIn so easily. Uh, Getting dressed weird. <laughs> well, a, lot, a lot could go on his. <laughs> uh, All righty. Laying bricks, building houses. <laughs> Bricklayer. I like that. <laughs> Let's move on to the other New York team. Let's talk about the uh, New York Knicks, who uh, very interesting game yesterday against the Philadelphia 76ers, who yeah, at were, the last R.C. Dugan's uh, show I predicted they, would go to the championship and win it. They were com- hmm. The Knicks were competitive in that game. Game. They were. Would you they put were. money on that? They were competitive. I'm gonna look Would you into put money it. on it? I'm going to look into it. I just the placed. are not good enough? No, I just placed a couple of future bets on a couple of college basketball teams. Okay. So, and I'm thinking about two more. So, I'm going to hold off on that. All right. I got some time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm starting to believe that. Um, I never thought I'd see the day, but at first I had like 50-50 Tom would be let go after this year. Now it's like eighty percent. I Tibbs? think. He's, yeah, he's definitely gone. You really mm. think so? Eighty percent. I don't think he should. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I think he should. I don't think he will be let go. The, he's. Gonna, I'm uh, telling you, the Knicks are gonna get roasted if they fire him. I know it. They're gonna get roasted. Did they fire him? You really think yeah. so? They're gonna get roasted. I know it. For it's sure. not gonna be a good look. It's a not bad that look. It's a, I agree with that. Not that it's a bad. It's move. good for the team. Yeah. Not, not that it's a bad move. It's a terrible but, look though. It's absolutely awful. I mean, listen, the Giants fired their, you know what, fourth, third coach in, yeah, in but, six yeah. years, and you know they got but, roasted for it as but, good as the, the fire was. They got roasted for the hiring more than the firing. I feel. Yeah, well, yeah, but here's the, the difference though with that though with Joe Judge, I would say this: he also had no experience prior to it, so the higher you can definitely question, it, and B, you can definitely say the quarterback sneak, and it was just once it became a big story, you knew he was gone. It was just that was a it was just a matter of time. And again, Mara couldn't keep him. Mara couldn't keep him. It's only a bad look. If it's the wrong guy you bring in after that. Mm. Oh, well, then, but that's that, what's going to happen, though. But, they're going to bring the wrong guy. I'm not confident they're going to bring the right guy. Uh, that's a good point. I mean, I'm, I've lost confidence in Leon Rose, too. And. But even if it's not <laughs> Leon Rose, like, it's just, like, this is the rumor that comes out, and maybe this is why the Knicks have been bad for 20 years. Dolan's always been rooted mostly a hockey guy. 
and, and a basketball guy. That's just he's more of a hockey guy. Is he? Yeah, it but shows I thought this year he was more of a basketball but guy. It shows this year. And but it, but yeah, the, but here's the thing though. This is why I think they're going to move on. Look what he did with the Rangers. He literally when last year again it was a, it was a COVID season. Hmm. Nobody thought the Rangers would be good. They thought they they would actually not be all that great. They weren't good. They flustered down the stretch. They were terrible. They still moved on from the GM. They still moved on from the head coach. And now it's actually working out. So maybe there's something to that and doing yeah. something with the Knicks. Yeah, I mean, I think Dolan over the years, he has kind of fluctuated between, you know, getting hands-on with the Rangers and getting hands-on with the Knicks. I, I hate to say, I really just think he needs to step in and say, okay, you have to fire Thibs and, like, right this ship right now. Because you're kind of losing interest. You're losing fan support. I don't think MSG has a Comcast contract right now, but their ratings are really bad. I looked at it. They're like 20th in the league. So no one's watching Knicks games, huh? You know why? You yeah. know why they're that low? Because... We're in prime time so much. Yeah. Well, no, Who wants to watch the Knicks in prime nope, time? There's that, and then they're in the worst spot to be as an organization. Yeah. Any basketball team, even with the play-in, you're not even competitive for a play-in spot. Yeah, but really, if the, even if you make the play and you get smacked, like it, you're I, better off losing and just getting a higher pick. I hear you, but even then, it's like it's even pathetic. It's it's so pathetic that we're not even in the running for a tenth seed. A well, tenth seed. What Wait, are they? Eleventh, twelfth? They're twelfth. Would yeah. you rather the Knicks miss the playoffs? You know, miss the playing completely, or would you rather them make the play? Like, miss it, miss, 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 it. Fans, miss it. To Knicks fans, does it mean that much? You so the organization, no. obviously, it does. They've defeated me so badly this year because I'm never the guy to say, okay, I want my team to lose for right. draft position or whatever agenda I'm trying uh, to push. But Yeah, I remember with, with the Saints, you were like, get them in now. Like, yeah, they like, had the shot, yeah. You want a chance just to say you're in the playoffs and compete. That's <laughs> why we play you, sports, oh. to compete. You had Ian Book starting against yes, the Rams. Yes, <laughs> And then uh, the Please, NFL I was COVID. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's and but, and, that's and, the, uh, and if and look if Tom's trying to win, which I think he is, he's not doing a good job, and that's that's again. But yeah, they're gonna get roasted anyway. Yeah. You know they're gonna get roasted. <laughs> Ross, I tweeted the other day. It's like Tibbs is one of the best tankers in the league because yeah. he's not even trying to lose. He's yeah. legitimately trying his best to win games. Yep, and he just mm-hmm. he's playing Alec Burks forty minutes at point guard, thirty four minutes, and yeah. that's like, unironically he's, he's yeah. falling into stereotypes, and that's why I don't think I'll be that sad if we get rid of him. I, I look, I, I, if they fired him tomorrow, I wouldn't be upset. I'm just, I've seen the Knicks history before. They don't hire the right coaches, and then they spit him out. I will say this though, if they do hire the next head coach, whenever that is. They better give him four years because you cannot consistently fire him after two years. Because another thing too, if you the Tom Thibodeau, you're still paying three more years. Mm. Get me Kenny Atkinson here from Golden State. He did go with Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, you know, developing that team. We have a bunch of young players yeah. on this roster. I don't want this win now crap. I, don't. I agree. No. I wanted him before Tibbs. Kenny Let's get a proper Atkinson. rebuild. Kenny Atkinson yeah. is 100 percent the right guy for the rebuild. That's all the time we got for today, though. Thanks for listening to WHPC Sports Talk. Tomorrow, of course, we'll have more on the owners completely trashing the game of baseball. Time for the staff meeting. And uh, <laughs> New York Knicks and, New- and Brooklyn Nets. Yes, time for our staff meeting. Cannot wait. Woo! Yeah! Four. No, I'm serious. I'm excited. Four. <laughs> Matt Leonard, Joshua Imahi, Elijah Blay, and Ross Levine. I am Michael Merlo here on the Voice of Nassau Community College in 90.3 WHPC.